Welcome in, everyone, for another exclusive interview brought to you by the Garnet Trust. Joining us today is South Carolina defensive lineman Alex Huntley, better known as Boogie. And Boogie, let's start it there. Where did this nickname come about for those that don't know? Um, when I was a kid, uh, real young, I used to crawl. And my brother was like, look at him, Boogie. I used to crawl really fast, he said. And so uh, I started playing at four. And my mom will see me playing. she be like, go Boogie. And just, you know, like, go Boogie. Just keep always yelling that. And so everybody just started calling me Boogie. And it just picked up from there. So you just naturally already in a four-point stance, just right right when at a young age, right? Yeah, really. Uh, that's what it was, getting out the stance. When you look at this past season from a defensive standpoint, right, I think a lot of people look at how this defense has come from year one to year two. Let's go back a little bit, though. For you personally, you didn't really have an opportunity that freshman year to really start getting comfortable because of that injury. You know, what was that offseason like for you? And, you know, not just the offseason, but having that injury, you go into college, you're all fired up, and then you have this injury to go backwards. So what was this past 12 months like for you? Um, I think for me, it was uh, something I needed. It was, like, crucial to who I am now and who I want to be and think I will be. It was a uh, – it was one of those things where you learn a lot about yourself when you get injured and you get taken away from the game that you've been playing so long and that you love. And so you really see, like, take yourself outside of football, how much work needs to put in and just what you have to do to be successful. And so I really learned a lot of that through that through that season. And then the off season was just it was kind of just like a like I was just battling myself, really, just because I. When I got that injury, certain people looked like, oh, like he got injured, you know, like it is, you know, injury, it, injury messed up a lot of people. But when I got it for me, it was like, I'm just going to prove to myself and everyone that, you know, I am going to be better coming off of this injury. And that's what I'm still doing now is like, you know, freshman year injury, it, it's rough just because your first year, you want to come in, make a bane. It's like a, a first impression. So uh, it, it sets you behind, but. But uh, I just, you know, worked and prayed, really worked, prayed and talked to my family a lot. And so that's really what got me through it. And, and it's doing pretty good so far. Outside of your family, were, were there anyone in particular, whether it be upperclassmen or people that maybe have played through the program that helped you get through that? Because I don't think people truly understand the mental grind that can take on you. People think about the physical side of it and having to get back, but not just during that time period when you're not playing. But even going back, you know, when, when you get back on that field and you're taking those first couple snaps and, I mean, shoot, even training camp, you're trying to get your legs underneath you and trying to feel like yourself again. Yeah, um, it, it, that's – I like how you said that. Like, the mental aspect, that's really what the battle was. Physically, I, I've been, you know, working since fifth grade is when I decided I really wanted to play football for forever. So I've been working out physically, doing all those training for a long time. It was the mental aspect that that was rough. So um, it was really a lot of uh, mainly my, my parents and my brother, those two, those three people. And then on the team, I'd have my, my D line room helped me so much. And we we're talking about it just compared to last year to this year. Like they're my brothers. Like I love those dudes. And, you know, they call me right now, said they need something. I'd go without a, in a heartbeat just because, you know, we, we the bond we have now is crazy. And so the D-line room, all them, we call us the creatures. So all them creatures, all my, all them, a lot of those dudes, they got me through a lot of it. And uh, it was a big thing was confidence, like you said, with the mental thing, just getting my feet back under. Because in the spring, I actually dislocated my shoulder. Mm, yeah. Uh, in one of the uh, one of the first couple, like, scrimmages kind of. And so that threw me off because I'd never had anything like that happen. It threw me off just, you know, hand placement, getting things in. And so I really had to make big strides in fall camp and then just summer workouts, just continuously just trying to work through it. So I, I mentioned the injury because that happens. And then a year later, you know, here we are today. And just a couple of days ago, you get your, your first big college football honor. You're honored. You're named to the all freshman SEC team. What does that mean to you knowing what you've overcome? Because I know you're a humble person and I know a lot of the athletes, I mean, shoot, I remember JC Horn. I mean, the stories that his father, Joe, found the trophy, um, one of the awards that he got underneath the back seat of his car, you know, it was just like, all right, you know, it's on to the next thing. So I understand you're probably already looking ahead, but knowing how much you had to overcome this off season, you know, is it that much sweeter? 
Uh, definitely, uh, it, it definitely is. And uh, I remember when I first saw it on my phone, like it, it was crazy. I called my parents, I sent in our little group chat, talked to them. And then after about 15 minutes, I was like, yeah, that's good. But it's so much work for me that has to be put in and, and just for the team, you know, we, we have such high goals and I, I play such high goals on myself and the team. So I feel like it's a, it's something to get the others, you know, watching and looking, but I'm just, I'm really just focused one right now on the bowl game. And after that, just off season, I, uh, I tend to not try not to get so focused in the wars because, you know, you can't go forward if you're looking back, you know, so it's a, it's a great honor, but and we just have a lot of work to do. No, I'm going to bring you back a little bit. You don't like looking backwards. I'm going to see, I think I have it somewhere there. That is uh, the Mr. Richland County Football Award. And uh, that was 2019. I was there that night. That's one of the footballs you guys signed for us for the yes, media. I, have, I still have that up in my office, you know, waiting for one day for Boogie to continue to make that thing wor- uh, worth, worth a lot of money. But yeah. you think back to those days at Hammond, and I, you probably would never have imagined in a million years that you would be playing high school football for a man like Eric Camry. Then you go to high school, then you go to college, right down the street, you get to stay in your backyard, you get to play with a teammate of yours, like Jordan Birch, you get to play now for Eric Camry. I know he's on the other side of the ball in the offensive room. What has that kind of been like going from growing up here in Columbia, that school that is in the shadows of Hammond essentially, and now you go there and you have a lot of Hammond connections there as well. Yeah, um, it, it's it's me. It's you know, every day I feel like I'm I'm realizing how much him and helped me, and uh, what how much like it's done for me. Just a lot with connections. You know, I see people all the time who either teachers or or former like peers, classmates who I just talk to, just keep a connection with, keep a bond with. And so the the outside of football part, man, it's amazing. And then with you know having played at Hammond with Coach Kimry, then come in here. Coach Kimry's playing for him again. It's it's crazy. Uh, it's funny you talk about that because when I told my mom I won the uh, the freshman All ICC thing, it was crazy because everybody used to tell me, "Oh, you don't go to a private school, won't get looked at. Don't go to private school. You know, you won't play enough competition. The the trans the transition from Skiza to SEC will be way too big for me." And so she was looking. We were talking like. Like you just can't focus on what others say. You just have to do you because, you know, I went to him and I loved it. I embraced it. And then as of right now, you know, I just won that award. We're about to play in a bowl game. So it's a, uh, it means a lot and it's helped me a lot. You mentioned something about that jump between Skiza to playing power five football, playing in the SEC at that. And we can compare it to other sports. We've seen Asia Wilson do it going from Heathwood and obviously the tremendous career she had at South Carolina and now being very successful in the WNBA. We see guys like Zion Williamson. I mean, the the names go on and on. And this isn't to take away from them, but we know that football is is something that, you know, you, the speed and the size sometimes, you know, especially in that position that you're playing defensive lineman, you can't run from it. You're going to be facing it every single play. What was that, you know, oh, shoot. I wouldn't say, oh, shoot, but like, oh, this is this is SEC football. You know, was it one of those moments you had in practice a year ago that you just noticed the speed just just a little bit different? And when did you start to feel more comfortable with it? And when did things start just to start clicking for you? Um, The SEC football moment for me was, I'd say, probably a day of walkthroughs. We had uh, we had walkthroughs last year. It was like the first thing. And so I'm going out there like, you know, we're just going to walk through, get some plays in. And they're all looking at me like, this is about to be practice. Yep. Like this, this is this is football just without pads. You know, the walk through is not walk walk through how it sounds. It is it is fast. It is competitive. It is real. And so that was a moment where I'm like, okay, you know, it's this is legit. And then the moment where I kind of clicked in and it was like, okay, this is, this is, you know, it's just football it was probably, um, I think fall camp, I say, because uh, maybe even this year, last year during the spring, you know, it was, it was good. It, it was just football, but this year in fall camp was when I was like, okay, you know, the game is the game. It's not going to change. It's all, you know, just faster, stronger, and a little bit more mental, but the game of football is never going to change. It is, you know, it's going to be, you know, a ball in between those lines, but 
I would just say fall camp, just day in and day out competing and going at it with people was just where I was like, yeah, this is what's fun, you know, just mm-hmm. playing football. So I, that's when I realized there's nothing really different. If you're mentally there, it, it's going to be the same. Well, and you were mentally prepared because you had a head football coach who was a philosophy teacher, I believe, in Eric Kimry. And I mean, man, you want to feel like a dummy at a table. I mean, anytime I sit with Eric Kimry and he's throwing out Aristotle quotes and this and that, I feel like I'm even dumber than I already am. So I mentioned all that. I mentioned all that. Do you have any good Kimry stories from high school that you can share? Because I'm sure you got some in college, but we all know. I say we all know the people that play football, they understand that you don't really get to see the offensive guys as much. I mean, I know you guys are in that building, but you don't see Kimry as much nearly uh, in comparison to what you were like in co- in high school. So what, what, what good Eric Kimry story can you share for us that won't get you in trouble too much with him? Yeah, that's that's what I was just thinking about. Like, what, what could I say that's, you know, not not too too funny? Um, a good one, Coach Kimry. So with Coach Kimry, he has this, like, I don't know, maybe confidence to him, just like, like presence to him that it's like he's always he's always calm but but confident at the same time so for me I wouldn't like think of a particular story I really think of just the way he carries himself especially in high school like when he'd walk into a room or walk into a building or just see him around it's like he always it's like he always knows something kind of just like he has this confidence but but like swagger to him it's weird to describe but whenever I see him I always just like laugh just because I know, one, he has something smart to say, just like funny, like mess with you. And two, that at the same time, after he messes with you, he could actually bring to something very meaningful. You know, and so we actually, Coach Day, the strength coach, you know, he's uh, he's big on struggle, like struggling well, because at the end of the day, life's going to be a struggle. Everything, there's always going to be a struggle and a lot of things that matter. But the key is to not, not struggle. The key is to struggle well. And so Coach Kimry had actually taught me that in the team my senior year. So that was one thing that I always kept from him was like, you know, you're going to go through trials and tribulations, but as long as you struggle well and like learn something from it, that's going to be what, you know, pushes you and keeps you going. Having him at the University of South Carolina, what does that do for this program? not just from a recruiting standpoint, not just from an everyday X's and O's standpoint, but big picture for the people that don't know Kimry the way that you do. Yeah, um, I think a, a big thing of it is like the mindset. You know, it, it's he has a history of, you know, he has a championship history. And I think that's a huge thing in football teams, in my opinion, is, is knowing what championship culture is and knowing what it takes to win, no matter the level. A winner is a winner, you know, it's just all at all different levels and, in time. So I think he knows how to win. He knows what it takes, the people it takes. And so that's what I I really like having him here. Like, I think he knows, and we're kind of on the same page just because I I was, I was at his, I was on his team, went through the, through his high school. It was just like the championship culture that he brings and knows, I think is, I mean, it's priceless really. If, if you can find somebody who knows what it takes to win, win championships, win awards, stuff like that. I think that is the is a really big part of the football team. And also just the love for South Carolina as well. Yeah. well that, that's a huge part. I almost forgot. Like he he loves this state, this city, this this college more than or, you know, more than almost anybody I know. Like he knows about it all. He's he's played here. He's done it. And so he's just another resource to you. if you if you have a question it's just like What's it like here and there? He's always a resource because he's been in the same shoes as all of us. He's played here. And so I think, you know, not only his championship mindset, but he loves this uh, university. Staying with that Hammond theme, I asked Jordan Birch the same question. I think it was on media availability day for you guys. With your connection to Hammond, um, obviously with, with Jackson Muschamp playing football there, you were teammates with him, you commit. You have Coach Muschamp there. Was there any doubt in your mind that maybe, shoot, maybe I, I won't finish my career necessarily in South Carolina. I might look at the other possibilities. Or was it as soon as you made 
uh, that decision to, to USC, you knew like, hey, look, that's a possibility. Coaches can leave at any given time, regardless of the circumstances. Or, you know, did you kind of kind of talk us through what that moment was like for you? Because I can only imagine it can be extremely challenging, not just for the fact that you commit to a school and it's your freshman year, but you do have a connection to that, that not just that coach, but that family. Yeah, no, I, uh, I do. I was talking to Jackson, I think, two days ago. I, you know, Jackson's a really good friend of mine. That whole family really, you know, went. He's balling out, but I do have definitely have a connection with that family. But Coach Barnes, he was the O line coach and AD. He's still the AD of him, and he uh, he'd always he was another huge resource for me now and through recruiting. He always told me don't commit to a school for a coach because at the end of the day, college football is a huge business, and so things happen, life happens, and so he always told me commit to a school that you could go to with if you didn't play football in school that is good for what you want to do, the, what education they can bring to you. And so that was a huge part of why I chose South Carolina. It's because I love the school, the, the city. And uh, yeah, it was, uh, it was sad. It definitely was. But at the end of the day, I didn't choose. I didn't come play football for the coach. I came from more of the university. And when did you feel comfortable with that transition with, with Shane Beamer? Because he comes in there. I went through it my senior year. I understand it can be tough. Coach comes in there, and it's not just one of these things of, hey, look, you know, we're trying to earn, you know, earn my trust. It's, it's a two-way street. When did you know that, hey, this man, everything that he's saying is believable? Um, this, honestly, the second he walked in uh, the indoor when we had that first meeting with him, I think it was in January. But, yeah, he uh, – because I had been recruited by Oklahoma – and I, I took a visit there, and he was who I was with. Coach Newell was who I was with. I, I had a relationship with him through recruiting. And so when I found out or just heard that, you know, Coach Beamer might might come coach South Carolina, that was the one, like, I, all these rumors and whatnot. When I heard that, I was like, oh, yeah, that, that's what needs to happen. Just because I, I knew his character and what type of person he was through recruiting. And I was like, that, that's a man who I'd want to play for. And so when he came in and talked to us in January, just like, what the goals is and how he's going to earn the trust, not just like expect it. I believed every word and, and that's all he's done. You know, he, uh, he's a great guy. He hasn't changed at all from, from when I recruited with him to now he's just a great guy and honest guy. And yeah, I was, I was ready for him from the second he got here. I'm going to pick on some of my fellow media buddies here for a minute because I, I'm sure it gets frustrating when he comes in there the first thing that everyone wants to ask you know what's different what's different this and that right what's different from this coaching staff compared to the other one that doesn't mean and I'm not trying to put words in your mouth so you tell me if I'm wrong that doesn't necessarily mean that things that Muschamp did were bad it's just that there is something that's just different in how he goes about things in, in, in Shane you know sometimes change is good what are some of those things that Shane has implemented that you think has helped this team be able to take that next step and that's not saying you know Muschamp didn't do it this way but has helped this team be able to turn things around to get to the point that you guys are heading to our bowl game now no definitely I agree with you too like um you never hear a bad thing about Coach Mushkin come out of my mouth you know I'm so grateful for him for what he's done for me you know in recruiting just and as even like outside of football he's a great man but yeah. Coach Beamer he uh not only you know just like obviously like game plan changes all that stuff like but I'd say more just the culture that he's brought in with him you know, the coaches he's brought in and the ideas that he himself has brought to the program. I think that is really what made all the difference in our team is, you know, we're close now. It's like a bond. You know, people want to be here. People like these, like these guys on the team, like these are, these are, I see these people more than my own family, like anybody else, like these are my brothers. And so that's really what it was, just a family culture and stuff like that. Like I mentioned earlier, we were talking the D-line group the other day, like this is the closest we've ever been. And I think that when you have, when you're out on the field and you know the guy behind you, like he's trying his hardest for you and you're trying his hardest for him, that, that attitude and mindset is really probably what I think, you know, gave us a, a little push. Being able to play in a bowl game, and I know this is your second season, but I mean, shoot, second season, three seasons, it's all the same at the end of the day, because I'm sure <laughs> just waiting to be able to get to a bowl game how how special is that for you to be able to to get to this point? Um, and how special is it, especially for the upperclassmen, some of those guys that haven't been to a bowl game maybe ever, depending on when they arrived at South Carolina um, or haven't been since 2018? 
Yeah, that's uh, for me, it's special because I get to play for these seniors and for these older guys. Like, like you said, some guys have never played in or won a bowl game and some of them are about to graduate. And so I just want to give them a chance to win and, and do that, you know? So, and for me personally, my attitude every year is, you know, I'm going to be playing till, till New Year's and after that, because that's when the playoffs are. You know, every year the same goal is to win a championship. And the goal isn't to get to a bowl game or win a bowl game. The goal is to win a championship. Unfortunately, we can't do that. So now it's to win a bowl game. But yeah, I, I really, this whole bowl game is not really for me personally. I want to help Jabari Ellis mm -hmm. win a bowl game or JJ Gabari, Jalen Foster, people like that. And so uh, I, that's that's what the bowl game is to me. I want to help these guys get a little bowl ring and, and do that and just get another game to play with my dogs. I got to ask you this, because I know you're one of the smarter dudes on, on the team. No disrespect to everyone else. But I know, you know, uh, you were student body president back in the day, correct? Yes, See? Sir. Okay. See, I know you were a smart dude. Still a smart dude at that. Yeah. Kind of give us, because we know National Signing Day is coming up on Wednesday. And I think some fans, they look, I mean, some fans, you know. I mean, shoot, you grew up down here. You understand it. You understand yeah. what recruiting's like. You understand how chaotic it can get. Does a bowl win really matter at that point to a majority of these people that make a decision you think? And, you know, what, what, what for a lot of these, these commitments you think, what do you think is like ultimately going to make that, that final decision? I know it all varies, but does a win against Florida and Auburn, can that be like, Hey, you know what, there's something special going on here. Or, you know, does a bowl game really make that much of a difference? You know, and I, I'm not trying to get you in trouble. This isn't trying to slip you up, but just your opinion on it. Um, well, like just going back to what you said, you said the Florida Auburn game. I think those definitely made a, a huge, huge impact on just the recruiting aspect and whatnot. But uh, I would, I would definitely say that it, it would mean something. Just because I remember, I think it was about four years ago, maybe. I think South Carolina played Michigan in the Outback Bowl in Outback. the 2017-18 season. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, and I'm pretty sure they came back and won that game, didn't they? Correct. Jake Bentley played phenomenal in that second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I like I remember that because uh, that was huge. I remember seeing it. I was like, wow, like you know that that's that's awesome. That's a huge win. And so personally, I would always think a win would mean you know some of these recruits. I know for me, it was more of uh, just a feeling that I had at the university, and I, I wasn't so focused on what the ranks were and, and the, the outcomes of the games were, just because. In my opinion, I want it to be something that changes that. So for me, it was the bowl game was always a great thing, but it wasn't something that's going to like push me over the edge, say I'm going there. But I, I think that it, it will mean a lot, especially who we play. And so I think it will mean a lot for, for this team and, and the future program. And knowing that a win can make this a over 500 record, that, uh, that probably mm -hmm. motivates you too, right? Now, now that I didn't even think about that. That that also means a lot. You know that that be that really was set this season. You know over the edge. That'd be real good. Last thing I'll ask you, Alex. Seeing what has transpired at South Carolina over the last twelve months with Shane Beamer coming in and what you guys have been able to overcome. I mean, it was a roller coaster for of a season to say the least. But you guys have now got to this point, getting ready for a bowl game. Something that hasn't been said here in Columbia in three years. What would you tell people on the outside, whether it be fans, boosters, maybe even future uh, recruits here at the University of South Carolina, about the direction that this program is headed in? Um, personally, I probably just say that this is the beginning. You know, this is a uh, we're we're 500 right now, and to us, we we messed up a lot. You know, this this was not the goal. This is not the goal at all. This was just you know the, the start, really. So this year we we're going to a bowl game. You know, you know, hopefully we pull it out. And then next year, it's only going to get better. It's always a climb. You know, this year we focused on the idea of climb just because we're rising, you know, we're getting to the top. Through struggle, we're going to rise. And so, you know, this is only the beginning. And that's how I see it. We, uh, we had a phenomenal change from last year to this year. And every year that should happen, just keep getting better. So, yeah, if, I, if there was one thing I'd say is that this is just the beginning.
Well, just a reminder, this interview today was brought to you by the Garnet Trust. If you want to be able to help guys out part of this new NIL era that we're in, guys like Alex Huntley and some of his teammates, you can be able to do that now by visiting GarnetTrust.com. We'll be able to set you guys up. So if you're a business, you're a fan, and you want to make sure that that money is going directly to players like Alex, we can make that happen. So be sure to go check us out at GarnetTrust.com. Alex, appreciate your time. We'll see you up in Charlotte. I can't believe that we are already getting to the end of the year. I mean, it's going to be 2022, right. man. You feeling old yet? Because I am. Man, time flies. <laughs> People say it all the time, but it really flies. Well, enjoy practice. I know you're finishing up finals, so go get some sleep while you still can, because I know it's going to be busy next couple of weeks for you, bud. Yes, sir. Thank you.